the Holy Spirit is the source of power. The Bible said in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, After the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you shall receive power. Amen. So power and the Holy Spirit go hand in hand. Power and the Holy Spirit go hand in hand. It's like water and wet. You can't get wet without water. You can't get the water without wet. Amen. You can't have power without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the anointed. Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit of power. Now what did that anointing enable him to do? It enabled him to do the work of his father. That's what the anointing is designed to do. The anointing equips you to do what God has called you to do. Jesus said in Luke chapter 4, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel, to heal the sick, to raise the dead. Notice that it took the anointing on Jesus before he could start doing what it was he was called to do. You need the anointing. Yes. Without the anointing, your, your calling is stalled. Your destiny is limited. Your future is hindered. We also discovered last week that God is the one who sovereignly or divinely selects who is anointed. In other words, the anointing comes from God. God ultimately reserves the prerogative to choose who gets close to him. No matter how many principles you follow, no matter how hard you try, you can't anoint yourself. See, let me, let me, let me, let me say this. The anointing is something you can't conjure up. You either have it or you don't. You can't fake the anointing. There's a lot of stuff you can fake. But you can't fake the anointing. You can't fake the anointing. The anointing is what makes you valuable. The anointing is what makes you valuable. Your value in the kingdom is not determined by your education. Your value in the kingdom is not determined by your ordination. Your value in the kingdom is determined by the anointing. And let me tell you something. Consecration is a requirement for the anointing. When God anointed people in the Bible, he separated them. He set them apart. See, it's the anointing that will distinguish you in this generation. It is the anointing that will make you different from everybody else uh, in your community, on your job in your family the anointing that most people fail to walk in the fullness of the anointing because number one they don't understand what it is number two they don't know how to receive huh and I think number three is because they don't know where to find it because the anointing is, it's hidden. It's hidden. Holy Ghost, help me to help them understand. Yeah, it's yeah, hidden. Yeah. It's hidden. You know why it's hidden? Because it's precious. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And when something is precious, you just don't leave it out for everybody. You have precious things yes, sir. that you own. You just don't leave it out for everybody to get. You put it in safes. Yeah. 
you lock it up you you hide it because it's precious and you don't want anybody to find the anointing is precious therefore God hides it because he doesn't want just the casual seeker to be able to locate it to receive the anointing you you've got to be hungry you you got to be desperate you got to be willing to dig and search all right let me let me get to my notes Gus oh my god thank god for the anointing I'm hungry for the anointing how many of you are hungry for the anointing all right, Acts the, the 10th chapter, right? We're talking about steps to the anointing in the house of Cornelius. In Acts chapter 10, verses 1 through 5, and there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man, one that feared God with all his house, which gave much arms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the, the day, an angel of God coming in to him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he had looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? He said unto him, Thy prayers and thine arms are come up for a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa. Call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. Now skip down to verse 44, same chapter, Acts 10. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost, or the anointing, fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision, which believed, were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Spirit for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God then answered Peter all right so let's look at some steps <clears throat> because again in each lesson we're showing you various steps to grow into the anointing so step number one for those of you who are taking notes put this in your notes step number one the first step that we discover toward the anointing in Cornelius's house is giving offerings to God. Notice it said in verse 2 of this 10th chapter of Acts, a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much arms to the people and prayed to God always. So giving offerings to God. Now, the story of Cornelius is the story of a man Who's mirac who miraculously received the infilling of the Holy Spirit. He was selected from his own town, uh, Caesarea. He was anointed with the Holy Spirit. And, and the passage in the book of Acts that we just read gives us a glimpse into his life. This special person who received the anointing. How did he receive the anointing? And the first step in the progression of Cornelius' anointing was the fact that he gave to the Lord. Who did he give to? Did he give to the church? Did, did, did he give to the pastor? To the apostles? To the prophets? To the evangelists? To the teacher? He gave who? Okay. He gave to the Lord. I want to show you how to do that. So I said, oh, I give to the Lord. Do you really? He gave to the Lord. This is the first step to the anointing in Cornelius' house. I want to receive the anointing. And one of the first steps in receiving is I have to learn how to give to the Lord. I have to give to the Lord. So giving offerings to God is the first step. To receive it, the anointing. Turn over to Proverbs chapter 19. Proverbs chapter 19. Proverbs chapter 19. 
Are you here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Or have you gone home? No, we are right here. All right. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 19, verse 17 says, One who is gracious to a poor man lends to the Lord, and he will repay him for his good deed. So when I give to a poor man, who am I essentially giving to? Lord. Who? The Lord. I can't hear you. The Lord. The Lord. So when I give to the poor, I am given to the Lord. And the Lord promised me he will repay me. I'm not expecting the poor people that I give to to give me back. Wow. Being gracious to the poor was Cornelius' chance to give something to God. He says in verse 4, thy prayers and thine arms, arms, arms are gifts given to the poor. That's what an arm is. He said thy prayers and thine arms are come up for a memorial before God. In other words, God remembers the seeds, the offerings, the gifts, the contributions that we give to the poor. He doesn't forget them. I give to the poor. I don't, I don't broadcast what I do, but I give to the poor. I support poor people, people who are less privileged, unfortunate people, people who don't have a lot. I'm always helping them. Always looking for ways to bless them. Because I know when I give to them, I'm giving to the Lord. Okay. That's why every time you support a project in a local church that's helping poor people, whether it's giving them socks to wear, or gloves to wear, or clothes to wear, or food, when you support the outreach ministry here at Abundant Life, when we're supporting people that are less unfortunate and less, less privileged, do you know you're giving to the Lord? Yes. When you take when you take a tag off the tree out there. Yeah. And say, you know what, I'm going I'm to buy one of these children a gift because yes. they ain't going to have a Christmas if I don't support. Yes. You are giving to the Lord. Yes. 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 Amen. Amen. Yes. It's quiet up in here. Yes, yes sir. Now, uh, that these prayers and acts of giving to the poor caught the attention of the Lord. When you give to the poor, you catch God's attention. Huh? Did you hear what I said? When you give to the poor, you catch God's attention. The angel informed Cornelius that it was his arms giving and prayer that arrested the attention of God. Friends, the anointing that you seek and the help that you desire can be acquired when you learn this great act of worship. This is worship. Number two goes right in line with number one so the first one is I'm giving offerings to God I'm giving offerings to God number two I'm giving offerings to the poor a devout man and one that feared God with all his house which gave much alms to the people verse two and prayed to God always see giving to the poor is a special form of giving that is precious to the Lord and one of the things that I've discovered about some of the most anointed men and women that I've encountered is that they have a strong ministry to the poor. They're very generous. Yes, yes. They're in partnership with orphanages or with other ministries. They may not be doing it themselves, but they partner with those ministries that have, you know, uh, a big heart for poor people, for impoverished nations. Yes. And they partner with them. 
Now listen to this. Minister to the poor does not remove poverty from the earth. Giving money to the poor does not usually solve the problems of poor people. This is not the issue here. God loves the poor and he anoints those who love them. Now I'm, I'm going to share with you, go to Psalms 41 because th this is where I got excited. When I started saying all the benefits that God will bestow upon people who support poor people. Five supernatural benefits of ministering to the poor are found in Psalm 41 verses 1 through 3. He says, blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. And he shall be blessed upon the earth. And thou will not deliver him into the will of his enemies. Good God Almighty. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. Thou shalt make all his bed in his sickness. In other words, God's going to make your bed up. So that means you ain't going to be sick in that bed for long. Because he's going to make it up. He can't make the bed up if you're still in it. Have you ever tried to make up a bed, baby? I'm going to make this bed up. Your husband's still in the bed. He got to get out of the bed. All right, here, here's the five things. I hope you caught them. But if you did, let me give them to you. All right, notice the Bible says... There are five things. Number one, he's going to uh, deliver you. He's going to deliver you. Number two, he's going to keep you alive. Praise God. Number three, he's going to preserve you. Number four, he's going to bless you. And number five, he's going to strengthen you. Look at there. Number one, he's going to deliver me. Number two, he's going to keep me alive. Number three, he's going to preserve me. Number four, he's going to bless me. And number five, he's going to strengthen me. These are five supernatural benefits of ministering to the poor. Who wouldn't want these blessings on their lives? Who wouldn't want these blessings in their ministry? No wonder Cornelius received one of the most precious outpourings of the Holy Spirit recorded in the Bible. Because he was a man who gave to God and who gave to the poor. You want the anointing? Learn how to give to God. See, see, see to the person who, who robs God of the tithe. The tithe is the Lord's. If you're not a tither, quit praying for the anointing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 If you're not a tither, quit praying for the anointing. It's not coming to you. The, the Bible said the tithe is who? The, Lord. the first step is you got to give to the Lord. Yes. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. So if I'm not tithing, if I'm not, if I'm not giving offerings, if I'm not giving to the Lord, then guess what? The anointing is going to evade me. Yes. The anointing is going to run from me. Yes. Let, let, let me show you why that is. Because tithing or giving has to do with your heart and not with your money. That's why God can't anoint you because he can't trust you because he doesn't have your heart. Because Matthew 6, 21 says where your money is, that's where your heart is going to be. So God said, if you can't give me your money, then I can't give you my, your, 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 you can't, you can't give me your money, then I don't have your heart and I can't give you my anointing. Because here's what God said, my anointing is the most precious thing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I'm not going to squander my anointing on anybody. I'm not going to in Invest my anointing in people who I don't have hearts. I don't have your heart. I can't give you what's most precious to me. Yes, sir. The anointing is precious. Yes. So God said, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you what is precious and I don't even have your heart. Yes, Lord, you got my heart. You know I love you. I love you, Lord, and I lift my hands. God says, okay. Let me, let me, let me really examine that. Let me really see if 
I have your heart. Yes. Yes. See, the, the Macedonians, when they gave to Paul in deep poverty, mm -hmm. people that didn't have nothing. First thing the Bible says is they first gave themselves to the Lord. Yes. Yes. And then Paul said, and then they gave themselves to us. Mm -hmm. See, you can't give yourself fully to God in his service. It, Somebody said, I'm a, see the problem we have with people in the church and, and the reason why folks don't serve with, with an unwavering commitment to the things of God is because they haven't first given themselves to the Lord. Because if I'm really giving myself to the Lord, I'm not going to have time giving my time to practice. I'm not going to have a, a, oh my God, I, I, I'll give myself to the service of God to be in the house of God if I've given myself to God the reason we have such problems with people God told me something the other day I was praying about some stuff God said the reason why people are so slack is because they haven't really given themselves to me because when you when when I have them then working for me serving me doing the things I call that's nothing but the battle is people haven't given themselves to the Lord Amen, light. Amen. Because when it's about God, yes, you need to be appreciated. Yes, you need to be encouraged. Yes, you. But you know what? Even if you don't get that, right. you understand. Yeah. This ain't about yeah. that. This is. I'm doing this yeah. as unto the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. So, so he said, first, you got to give yourself to the Lord. Yes. So the first thing is I got to give to God. If I want the anointing, then I got to learn how to give to the poor. And that's an extension of giving to the Lord. Because we read earlier, when you give to the poor, you lend to the Lord. Yes. And then let's move. Number three. Third step. So the first step is. Give to God. Number two? Give to the poor. All right. And we're clear on how we do that. All right. Number three? Pray. This is third step. Verse two and verse four. And pray to God always. And then he says, Thy prayers and thine arms, in Acts 10, are come up for a memorial before God. So the next step to Cornelius' anointing was prayer. Scripture tells us how Cornelius, how his prayers attracted God's attention. Your prayers. See, I've said this before in times past, and I think it bears repeating. Uh, prayer time is never wasted time. It is always invested time. Yes. Yes. You never waste your time praying. Prayer attracts God's attention. Prayer has always been a key to the anointing. In fact, let me suggest to you, no one comes into the presence of the anointing without prayer. No one comes into the presence of God without prayer. Prayer is a key factor to the anointing. Let's look at a few uh, Excuse me. Let's look at a few scriptures to show you the life of Jesus and why he was so anointed. Because he spent so much time praying. In fact, isn't it interesting that out of all the things the disciples could have asked Jesus to teach them. I mean, they could have said, Master, teach me how to walk on water. You know, show me that trick you did out there on that water, Jesus. I won't know. What you do? Do that again. Teach me how to do that. Lord, Lord, teach me how to take two fish and five loaves of bread and multiply so that I can feed 5,000 men, not including women and children. Lord, you know what? That was such an awesome feat you did the other day at Lazarus' grave. That man was dead for four days and you raised him from the dead. Teach me how to raise the dead. Teach me how to open up blinded eyes. Teach me how to cause crippled people to walk. They didn't ask for that. Out of all the things they wanted to learn from Jesus before he exited the earth, they said, Master, teach me.
teach us how to pray which indicates to me that there was something about I just wish I could have watched Jesus I could have been there to see how he interacted with the Father there had to be something powerful Peter, James, and John got a glimpse of it on the Mount of Transfiguration when they were talk, when Jesus was up there talking to the Father and God literally turned his inside out and his outsides in. Yes, yes, yes. Teach yes, yes. us yes, yes. how to pray. Yes. Because here's what I believe. I believe they saw him pray more than they saw him heal the sick. Yes. He spent more time praying than he did preaching, teaching, or healing. Do you, you do know those were the three primary things that Jesus did. Three primary things Jesus did was preach, teach, and heal. That's it. But they saw him pray. And they said, Master, teach us how to pray. We, we want your prayer life because they understood that the source of his teaching messages, the source of his preaching, the source of his healing was prayer. Prayer was the source of the powerful messages that he preached and taught and the mighty miracles that he was able to perform. Go over to uh, Mark chapter 1. Prayer is vital. If you don't have a prayer life, then you're not a candidate for the anointing. And I'm not just talking about praying when you come to church. Amen. You got to you got to put some time in. Yes. Amen. Amen. Mark chapter one. You got to pray. You got to pray when you don't feel like it. You got to pray when you're tired. Hallelujah. You got to pray when you don't feel nothing. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. See, you waiting on something to feel the Spirit. No, you know, you don't have to wait to feel nothing. Just learn how to pray. Live a life of prayer. Hallelujah. Verse 35, and in the morning, rising up a great while before day, before the sun came up, he went out. And departed into a solitary place and there prayed. So Jesus got up early in the morning before the sun came up and went into prayer. Boy, that's commitment. That's dedication. Come on, somebody. We can't turn that bed loose. <laughs> Holy Spirit tapped you on the shoulder at 2 o'clock in the morning. Say, come on, spend some time with me. I'm tired. Turn over to Luke chapter 6. You're not going to receive the anointing. The anointing comes to people who pray. You got to have a prayer life. Verse 12, and it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. Boy, he prayed all night. I mean, look about, think about it. Jesus got up early in the morning and prayed. Then he prayed all night sometimes. Let me show you why the power of God was present with Jesus all the time. Why he always had power in his life. Turn over to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Verse 16, I'm in Luke, the fifth chapter, 16th verse. And he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. What did he do? He prayed. He withdrew himself. He, he, see, sometimes you got to withdraw yourself from the crowd, from people, from fam. You got to learn how to slip away and get in your prayer closet. And notice what happened in verse 17. Now keep that in mind. He withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed and it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by which will come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem and the power of the Lord was present to heal them why was the power of the Lord present to heal him because he withdrew himself to pray notice the power of the Lord that was present to heal them was produced through the prayer life of Jesus amen Prayer 
is vital to the anointing. In fact, one of the only prayer topics Jesus taught us to pray was to pray for the Holy Spirit. I said one of the only prayer topics Jesus taught us to pray was to pray for the Holy Spirit. In Luke chapter 11 verse 13, he said, If you then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? If you desire to be anointed, pray specifically for the coming of the anointing. Ask God to give you the Holy Spirit. Well, I already have. I pray in tongues. No. There are many feelings. Refilling. Ask God to bless your ministry and your life with His presence and power. I mean, you have to ask. There has to be something you do on a continuous basis. Keep praying the same thing for years. I pray every day, Lord, give me the Holy Ghost. Fill me up with your power. Lord, I need your presence. I can't make it without your presence today. Lord, I need your anointing. Anoint me with fresh oil today. Thank you for yesterday's anointing, but I need a fresh one today. Every day, I pray for the Holy Ghost. Every day, you got to pray. If you desire the anointing, ask God to give you the Holy Spirit. Keep praying the same prayer. And I'm telling you, your prayers and your arms will come up before God and will arrest his attention. See, I believe that God will see how bad do you really want it. Well, I asked last week and I ain't seen no change. I've been praying the same prayer for two months. It ain't nothing happening. God's waiting to see how much do you want the anointing. Listen to this. When you pray earnestly, God will send an angel to you. You may not see him physically. To guide you and bring you to the place of the anointing. God will orchestrate your steps. Step number four. Look at verse seven. Acts 10. And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. The fourth thing is you have to obey visions. Obey, obey visions, obey visions, obey visions. See, the next step to the anointing is to obey heavenly visions and dreams. Pay attention to your dreams. Pay attention to your dreams. Most of us have dreams and visions which we do not obey. We say, oh, that's just old dream. But I really didn't understand that. It was too vague. See, if we don't obey the visions and dreams that God gave us, we will never experience the anointing. We all have dreams. Some of them are vague and unclear. But we need to learn how to obey. Because here's the reality. The drive to obey these visions is the drive towards the anointing. Amen. Amen. What is God saying to you in a dream? What is God saying to you in a dream? Each dream and vision will take you one step closer to the journey. Toward the anointing. Cornelius obeyed the vision and encountered the apostle Peter. Peter also obeyed a vision and met with Cornelius. That's why he was able to preach to Cornelius. Because God gave him a vision. While Peter was preaching, Cornelius and his entire household received the anointing. See, listen. As you can see, one thing that leads to another. One thing leads to another. You hear God, you have a dream, God speaks to your heart, you obey that, and then when you obey that, you get connected with a person, that person connects you with another person, and all of a sudden, listen, you're, you're, you're moving down the destiny track toward the anointing. Amen. Amen. 
one situation sets you up for the next move because you obeyed. See, you need to start doing what God is telling you to do today. Step number five, break necessary traditions. In order to be anointed, traditions have to be broken. Peter was not given, he was not used or accustomed to mixing or fellowshipping with the Gentiles. However, in order for the anointing of the Holy Spirit to be released, the lifestyle of Peter had to change. In verses 13 through 15 of Acts 10, and there came a voice to him, arise, Peter, kill and eat. And Peter said, not so, Lord, but I've never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, what God has cleansed, that called not thou common. So he had to break with a tradition. There are new things that God has in store for your life. And see, people who cannot be guided into new things often don't receive the anointing. See, you're so used to doing the thing that you've always done, doing it the same way. God says you got to do something different. See, anointed people often, they often travel in, into uncharted waters. Do you want God to use you? Do you want God to anoint you? Do you want God to empower you? Then if so, you may have to do something that you've never done before. You may have to go places you've never been before. You may have to, amen, meet people that you've never met before and, and, and fellowship with people that you've never met before. And you've got to be willing to get out of your comfort zone. Amen. Amen. Quit hanging with the same little three people that you always hang with for 15 years and God's trying to introduce you to some new relationships, but you're too scared to launch out in the deep. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's why you'll never get anointed. Cornelius would have never got anointed if he wouldn't have met Peter. Yes. Number six, obey the man of God. Yes. Verse 32, send therefore to Joppa and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. And he's staying in the house of one Simon a Tainer by the seaside, who when he cometh, when he cometh, not when God cometh, when the man of God cometh, shall speak unto thee. In Acts 10, 48, said, and he commanded them. See, the next step to Cornelius receiving the anointing was to be obedient to the instructions of the man of God. Just like dreams and visions, the commands of a man of God will gently push you further down the road to the anointing. See, what happens when the anointing comes on you? When the anointing comes on you, you become a man or a woman of authority. In other words, people will obey your commands. So if you don't learn how to obey the commands of other people, then you are sowing the seed of rebellion into your own future. Lord have mercy. If you don't obey the instructions of the man of God, you are simply sowing seeds of rebellion to your own future. How God going to make you a person of authority? When you haven't learned how to be up under authority. Yep. 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 Look at your neighbor and say, good teaching. Good teaching. Say, wake up and listen. Wake up and listen. <laughs> Obey the man of God. Be obedient to instruction. You know what I've discovered? Let me say this and then I'll share the last one. People who are disobedient to instructions are dangerous. Because what I've discovered about people who won't obey is that they are potential traitors. I always watch people who don't obey my instructions. Yes, sir. If I ask them to do something, they do something the opposite of it. I mark them in my mind as a traitor. They will. They have the potential to betray me down the road. Every person who has ever been disobedient to my instructions as a leader over 20 years, they have turned out to be traitors. Yes. Judas. Yes. Because a Judas don't want to submit to authority. Yes. So I watch people to see if they're obedient. Because disobedient people are dangerous. Don't ever forget it. If you ask people to do something, you give instructions and they do their own thing, those are people you can't trust. Amen. Now I, I have the experience. I'm telling you what I know. Number seven. Here's the last one. Listen to the word of God. 
while Peter yet spake these words, Acts 10, 44, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. Cornelius and his household were listening to the preaching of the word when the Holy Ghost fell on them. That's why it's important to be in Bible study. It's important to be in church. It's important to get the CDs and listen to the word and be in the presence of the word because I'm telling you, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, it was while I was listening to the word that the Holy Ghost fell on me. The Bible said in Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2, and the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet and then I heard him that spoke unto me. Ezekiel said, Ezekiel said, when he heard the word, the spirit entered into him. The spirit enters into you when you hear the word. As you hear the word, the anointing comes into you. Man, as I listened to CDs and tapes of years gone by, amen, of great men of God, that anointing that was on them came into me. Thank you, Lord. Because I listen to the word. Anyone who exposes himself to the preaching of the word of God will become anointed. Don't ever forget it. The anointing is not something that is taught. It's something that is caught. You have to catch it. You have to catch it. Elijah walked past Elijah and threw his mantle on him. See, some of you miss it because you don't know when a man of God is throwing his mantle. You ain't there to catch him. You ain't in the right position. You can't get somebody's anointing by rubbing their hand. Oh, let me go touch. Oh, I'm going to get right. this. Oh, I'm going to get past this. No. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. The anointing is caught. You got to learn how to be in the right spiritual position. The word of God is God. God is his word. That's what John 1 and 1 says. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. Yeah. People in Cornelius' house were not prayed for. Yeah. No one laid hands on them. Yeah. No one touched them. No one blew on them and fell over. Yeah. No one anointed them with oil. No one received an anointed prayer cloth. They were just listening to the Word. See, listen, let me tell you something. Nobody has to lay hands on you. You don't need nobody to call you out and prophesy to you and blow on you and, and throw oil on you and swing water on you and say, Receive! All you got to do is be hungry, sit there, and open up your spirit. Say, God, I want the anointing. And while the word is going forth, the spirit will enter into you. And you'll leave, amen, with something on the inside of you. And you'll be impregnated with an anointing, praise God, that will change your life forever. How hungry are you for the anointing? Amen. Too many of us are casual. Some of us. We'll never get the anointing because our attitude is we're so indifferent to the things of God. Don't ever become so familiar. That's why I purposefully, intentionally, I always keep a line of respect with the men of God I'm in covenant with. Amen. Because I want their anointing. Amen. Not interested in being their friend. Friendship comes. To a certain extent, there are certain bonds we develop, but that's not what my goal is. My goal is the anointing. Yes. 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 Don't come become common. Don't think you can just talk to, you know, your man of God or woman of God any kind of way. That's right. That's right. That's right. said, no, no man after the flesh. Yes. 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 Some of us, we get too comfortable. Amen. Amen. Then we wonder why the anointing is skipping over us. Yes. And you like, man, I don't know why so and so they got they got the anointing of the leader, but hey God, I know I've been around the past for ten years because you're too familiar. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you more concerned with trying to go eat at his house versus get the anointing. Come on, somebody. I want the anointing. I want the anointing. Amen. Did y'all get anything out of the word? Come on, let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet. We're going home.